project management book is a good thing, right? You know, a book, a book, a body of knowledge about project management. Not necessarily. There's a problem with box, all of them, and it's not immediately obvious what that problem is. The problem is with universal ideas. Plato knew about universal ideas. He came up with this stuff over 2,000 years ago. Consider a chair. What makes a chair a chair? It's something you sit on. It has a back. Yes, otherwise it would be a stool. It has legs. No, wait a minute, it doesn't have to have legs. It might be attached to a wall. But that's a specific chair. Not all chairs are attached to walls. So what is the universal idea that we use to identify something as a chair? There's a bomb in this. Can you sit on this chair? No. The bit that's useful isn't there. The same applies to the diagrams and concepts in box. We need universal ideas so that we can have a conversation. But the bit that's useful isn't there. The really useful stuff is in actual projects, specific projects, and they're all different. Here's the rub. If a group of project managers is presented with a book labelled Body of Knowledge, what messages does this send? A toolbox, a tick box, how to do stuff. A book gives us a common language. People who actually do project management accept that there's more to it than knowing things. The knowledge of how to manage a project isn't in the box. But boxes are used to test people on how good they are as project managers. Ah yes. So we've created a book of chairness, full of abstract ideas that we can't get to work. Then we turn them into standards and test people on them. Is this useful? It's useful in terms of making money. It's useful if you're a training organisation or if you sell a bock. Let's go back to the idea of a common language. Surely we need a common language. Yes, but if you speak a second language, you're exposed to new concepts, new and different ways of looking at the world. Isn't that a good thing? Isn't that how we learn? There's a power base behind knowledge. If you have a common language, you control the conversation in lots of different ways, in books, in magazines, on websites. It might not be deliberate, but it's what happens. The language steers the conversation. A common language is restrictive and controlled. Rather than helping knowledge develop, a common language can actually stifle the development of new ideas. What if your ideas aren't in the conversation? Does this mean they're not important? What's the real purpose of professionalising project management? It gives us credibility. It sets standards for competency and integrity. People who use project managers need to know what the standards are. Isn't it to ensure quality and to make things work better? But professionalising can turn into standardisation and bureaucracy can take over. Box are produced by committees. Committees make compromises and attempt to produce a single institutional truth for each topic. Qualifications and accreditation are based on what's in the box and the focus shifts from knowing how to manage projects and making things work better to possessing the knowledge in the box. So rather than making everything better, a box is a recipe for more of the same. Why is this so? It all stems from the belief that the world is like a machine. If only we knew which buttons to press and levers to pull, we would get the results we wanted. This is the belief behind Frederick Taylor's scientific management, which has led to the search 
for the one best way of doing things. We realise now that complex systems don't work like that. Systems organise themselves. There is no one best way. We tend to assume that because an idea is in all the box, stood the test of time, that sort of thing, then it must be right. Actually, it has nothing to do with being right. Concepts and ideas spread because they're good at spreading. It's a kind of evolution for ideas and concepts. But because of the way box are produced as commodities, it's not a natural process. It's more like farming. The dominant ideas become domesticated and reproduced. New ideas, which might be just as useful, don't have a chance to enter the gene pool. So where's the real knowledge about how to be good at project management? Let's forget about box for a moment and think about making nails. Let's say a blacksmith can make 500 nails in a day. He makes great nails, but the market demands more than he can produce, so he employs another person. After a while, they find that if they split the task, they can make more than 500 nails each. Let's say they can make 1,500. But this still isn't enough, so they employ a third nail maker and divide the task into three. Now they can make 3,000 nails a day. But the knowledge of how to produce a nail is no longer in one person's head. Making a nail needs all three nail makers. The knowledge is distributed across a network of people. Project management is the same. The real body of knowledge about project management is held collectively by people who do project management. No individual project manager possesses the entire body of knowledge about project management. How can we tap into the real body of knowledge? Here are a few ideas. We could start an open source BOC, one where the wild ideas can mix with the domesticated ones and widen the gene pool. Could this work? Maybe we could just take the box away. What would happen then, I wonder? Or we could do what we do every time we type a question into Google. We could ask the network. What do you think of that? A network rather than a book? What do you think?